notification this morning and I was expecting you guys to help you know <laughs> cut the tune all right so thank you so much for joining today uh I know we're all getting ready for Thanksgiving um so we'll do this um session and then maybe take a break for Thanksgiving but I might do one on my own um, so that we'll catch up with the, you know, the time. But um, as I promised, we want to talk about discernment. And you all know that um, this is something I have been saying a lot um, in previous, like in my previous um, episodes, um, because discernment have come up quite a bit. Like a lot of people have been talking about it, especially my my famous uh, <laughs> new age people. But um, we want to talk a little bit about that because it's not just the issues that come up with um, discernment, but as a Christian, you need to be able to decipher um, spirits, discern um, spirits. And so it's, it's very, very important. And one thing I must reemphasize is that all of us have the ability or the capability to um, discern. Okay, because from the story of Adam and Eve, we see that what we were forbidden to eat, we ate it. And that was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so everybody, no matter how small you are, how big you are, how old you are, how young you are, you have um, the tendency or capability to um, know the difference between good and evil um, and distinguish good and evil. And that is why I always say a kid is not too small to know um, what is wrong from what is right. And so no matter how small they are, we should start um, instilling discipline on kids, even as little as babies, because they already know when you were born, you know what is good from, from what is wrong. Um, and so... Um, it is up to us to hold fast to what is good, as the Bible says, and not um, forsake good, all right? But when the, the, the problem happens or the problem comes when people try to mask um, and pretend, as I mentioned last, um, last episode, when you can't tell the fake from the real when it's difficult to decipher which one is the original and which one is counterfeit. So I would use my experience as in the quality industry when um, I started um, my quality career. I started off in the production floor. I became a uh, 
a quality uh, technician to inspector to control and then I went back to school I got my Six Sigma green belt and I also got my master's and became a quality engineer now through all those stages of my career I have worked in factories and um, one of the places that I worked was was where we were um, producing secured, I'll say secured documents, just to be, um, just to say very little, but it, it we'll, we'll just say secure documents for a federal facility. And uh, because of that, first of all, I can only say now that I'm not working there. Um, and also um, it was a very, stressful uh, environment because you have to be a hundred percent sure that this looks almost like the original you know for it to go through for it to be approved and and be produced and so as a result of that my first few months at that workplace i spent hours just looking at the original documents to make sure that if I approve of any document, it has to be almost a hundred percent, like the tolerance level is so little. You know, I have worked in other factories where probably they're just producing like a plastic bottle or a plastic plate. So, you know, you, the tolerance level can be as wide as they wish. And it doesn't matter as much, but um, in a federal facility, that is like of utmost importance that whatever is produced is top notch and um, there's no room for mistakes, you know, um, and because it doesn't just cost you your job, it, it might cost you your freedom. <laughs> so you have to be very, very thorough, you know, but I enjoyed that job so much because that's my forte. I, I am detailed. I am very thorough. And so I would spend hours just looking at the original because when you're familiar with the original, um, when you're on the floor, you don't necessarily have to go back to the office to go check you automatically know when you see something that has a flaw you can detect it immediately there are some flaws that are glaring like as you see it you know this cannot go through you know you can't approve it and you'll have to ask them to run the sample again but then there are other flaws that are hard to detect and that's the stage where now in in, in our christian work walk um, in the Christian world right now, we have come to a point where it's hard. It, it gets, it, it's getting harder to detect um, good from evil because they're masking it. Like the Bible says, um, I, I put a few scriptures because I know I talk uh, randomly, so I would need to state the exact um um, scripture. So there was a scripture about angel of light, this guy's in this angel of light. Okay, Second Corinthians 11, 13 to 15, that um, we have um, some men now that are so de deceitful as the Bible says, and it says, I no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness their end will correspond to their deeds. So the only way we would be able to know, is, the Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. And the first marker, or what I, in, in the quality world we'll call KPIs, is the fruits of the spirit. That's the first thing that you would use to detect whether this person is who they truly are, or if they are a wolf, or if they are, a shepherd or a sheep and um, most times 
they mask that too, because the fruit of the spirit is love, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and all those self-control. People can mask it. People can act. People can pretend. All right. So the second marker or the second way in which you can know is the greatest commandment, which is love. Okay, but even with love, some people mask it as well. I, you know, I have met a lot of people who mask that they love people, act nice, just so they can, you know, fool people. Um, so the third set of KPIs that I would suggest is the walks of the flesh. All right, if they act uh, nice and everything, but the works of the flesh, the things they do, right? According to Second Corinthians eleven uh, fifteen, it says their end will correspond to their deeds. We we have to look at what they do because John seven twenty four says, "Do not judge by appearances." It's not just what you see from the outside, but we should judge with right judgment by their deeds, by their works. So the works of the flesh. Um, which is shown in Galatians, um, are all these different scenes, all kinds of scenes, um, like um, idolatry, adultery, fornication, um, all these scenes, all right? But even with all these scenes, there are some people also who would mask it, or some people who are original but they're just struggling with these sins so that is also not a hundred percent you don't you cannot make a hundred percent decision out of that so in the quality world when the kpis are not matching or you're still not sure then we do the test okay you have to test the bible talks about test the spirits it first you know, there are several, okay, several scriptures about testing the spirit. Um, First John 4, 1, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. And for many false prophets have gone out into the world, okay? And um, there's another there's another scripture. I, I did put it here. Let me check. Um, there was something about, yes, First Thessalonians 5.21 that says, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. And First Corinthians 14.33 says, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. So if there's anything that confuses you or their, their attitude confuses you or the one minute they're smiling and preaching or singing or, you know, doing things for God, the next minute they are really mean and mean-spirited and putting down others, then that's the spirit of confusion. You know, you don't really know who they are. And men are deceitful and they are presenting themselves as angel of light. And so how do you test them? How do you test the spirit? Um, I just you know, take my mind back to when printing these documents and because, you know, some of them are for like the treasury or like, you know, very important secure um, documents, we take them to the, the lab, all right, the QT lab, and then we'll have like a big table because our room was the most lit room in the whole of the production floor, like it's bright and there's light everywhere. And that I just remembered, okay, so if for quality we, we want to test against the light, then that's the same thing for humans. And that's the same thing in this Christian book. We want to test them against the light, okay? We want to put them side by side with the light, put, shine the light bright, close to them and see how they react to light. And so um, most of what the Bible talks about testing, um, if you look at Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the word of God 
is living and sharp, is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and of spirit, of, jo of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So if you want to know the thoughts and intentions of somebody's heart, you lay it side by side with the word of God. You see their intentions and their thoughts and put it close to the word of God and see uh, if it aligns with the word of God. And many times that's when they fail. The things they say, the things they do, does it align with the word of God. And if it doesn't, then that's when you see, um, well, this is counterfeit. This is not the original. That's when we, we raise the red flag in, in, the, in the quality lab and say, let's run it again. Let's change some parameters. Let's change the controls and run it again. Or we have to, you know, uh, throw the whole batch you know, and that, that is like millions of dollars, you know, thrown into, into the pit, you know, and, and, and lost. And that we don't want that. We, we don't want to have to do a whole production. And then at the end of production, when it's at the assembly, you know, last stage or production phase, that's when you figure it out. Um, you have to figure it out from the start. All right, even before the batch runs. So the same thing, um, don't wait until it's too late because your life depends on it. I, that's why I always, you know, when I was working there, I always say I'm your friend, but um, the, this this job, my life depends on it. Not uh, not just my life, my career, my, my, my future it depends on it. And so um, in terms of things that you in the world and in church things of the spirit it, it 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 has a lot of weight okay your life depends on it and even after life your afterlife depends on it so you should not take it for granted you know should not you know play with it and philippians 1 9 to 10 says and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent all right that is how we approve in a federal facility when you're working as a quality technician or engineer we can only approve things that are excellent, that have reached the mark, all right? As I told you, the tolerance level is very small. Um, and so there are, there's no room for mistakes. And that is the same thing with, with God. Like we need to approve things that are excellent, pure blindness, because that's the only way we can be sure that we we'll, we'll, um, we are receiving the right word for heaven. And so um, it's a matter of life and death. And another thing I mentioned, I remember was um, there are times when even the light test can be confusing. Um, because when you put it against the light, sometimes you can see the image that we're looking for inside, because sometimes from the outside, you will not see the image that most times we're looking for. And then we'll have to go um, through the light to look for the image, the, the set image for that particular document. Now, there are times when that image is there, but there are still flaws in the image. And most times it takes people who are mature, who have been there for a long time. I remember when I got there, there were people who have been there 30 years, 40 years, and they obviously were not happy that this young lady was, <laughs> you know, there was a lady that used to say that that small girl from straight from college, they just came and put her above us, uh, but I wasn't even straight from college, but okay. Uh, but I didn't, I made sure that I made friends with them, um, to at least pick their brains on things like those. So 
um, what am I saying? There are times you need to ask um, the opinions of others. You need to ask for advice. You need to seek. I, and sometimes I go to the older people that have been there for a long time and ask them, what do you think about this? Um, uh, sometimes, because I used to work nights, night, they used to put me in night shifts because um, when you go um, newly to a place, most times um, people don't want to work the, the hours that you work, <laughs> you know? So I used to work night shifts. And when you work night shifts, um, most times your boss's phone is switched off. There is probably just you running the shift. So you have to make decisions by yourself or you talk to people who have been there long. So it's the same thing with um, this walk, this Christian work. Um, Hebrews 5.14 says, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So how is discernment, you know, how do you increase your skill in discernment by constant practice for the mature? So that means people who have been through some things, who have been on in this faith for a long time, it comes with experience. You, you, you don't get, um, you don't get good at discernment by just reading the word, all right? I didn't get good at my job by you know going to school and getting all the degrees or whatever i had to ask the people who have never been to college or to university but they've worked with these documents for years some of them 30 years 40 years 50 years i had a friend there she was an older woman i'm usually very very um i i, I bond better with older women and i, I Women my age, sometimes we don't bond as much, but older women, I often bond well with them. And she was like a mother to me. Like she took me under her wing and she showed me, and most times I'll be looking around for her, you know? And um, yeah, so those are the things that we as Christians, we should rely on older, uh, older folk. And that's why mothers, as I call them, mothers are essential deacons the elders um and when i say deacons i'm not talking about the deacons that people put just because they have money i'm talking about people who have been through some things and who have experienced life in the faith and have come out unscathed we you know uncontaminated because some people have allowed the pressures of this world to to choke them but those who have still flourished, who have still blossomed out of all the grief or all the pain or all the things that they've gone through in life, but they still are victorious, they still emerge as strong in the faith. Those are the soldiers of Christ. And they don't necessarily have to be anything in the church. They can be just an old woman sitting by the side of the pew but she's been through some things she's lost some things she's you know persevered she's gone through trials long suffering those people are very mature and they they know things they can discern and so if you are feeling lost you don't know and discernment is not just for false prophets but also life in general like you want to make a decision and you're confused as to what to do ask some of these people as i told you when i was working i'm good at that i will go and ask if my boss is not around or if my boss phone is switched off i will go to like a, a fellow her her compatriot someone in in, in um an upper senior seniority level and check with them you know and and that is essentially how you can excel in this christian race um, even if you are a pastor, even if you are a man of God, woman of God, someone seasoned in, in, you know, literally in the Bible, but you haven't had the years of experience that some other folk have, you can rely on other folk. You shouldn't be 
to to speak with some of these folks and also um, a platform asking or um, talking to people who are mature in the faith um, we should also because the bible says in first john 4 1 that do not believe every spirit okay do not believe because sometimes we want to believe we just want to accept people for who they are you know but um romans 12 2 says do not conform to this world do not be transformed you do not conform to this world but be transformed be transformed by the renewing of your mind that by testing you may discern you may discern the will of God. So if you want to know what is the will of God, the will of God has to be good. It has to be perfect. It has to be acceptable, All right? What is good and acceptable and perfect, it has to be. And that's why the only way I can, I can relate those two things is like working with secured documents in, in a federal facility because it has to be 100% top-notch quality so that's why the bible says the will of god has to be good acceptable within tolerance level that means acceptable and perfect it has to the will of god has to be perfect and so if it's not that then that is not it it's not it and so in order for you to be able to discern what is god's will in this situation that is how you know renew your mind don't just believe every spirit don't just accept whatever you know but renew your mind with the word of god and you can see and test it you know and test with the word of god first kings 3 9 says give your servants therefore an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. That was Solomon's um, prayer when he asked God for wisdom. James 1.5 also says that if you lack wisdom, ask God. Ask God. So he is the final say. Like if all else fail, ask God. It's the same thing as me going straight to my um, me going straight to my boss, um, maybe the next day or something, or when I can get a hold of her, or we go to a senior, a more senior, up to the CEO if possible, um, to get a result. That's what you do. If the, if all else fail, go and ask God for Him to give you the the discernment you need. Submit your discernment to God because your mind will fail you. If you are just believing or you just have that gut feeling, as people usually say, I have a gut feeling or instinct, it will fail. The advice of people will also fail. Like some, some people, they, they probably don't know because, because there are some instances where they would look at something and say, we've never seen this kind of thing before. If it, it has never happened before, it, it, it's possible, you know? So, even the advice of people will fail. The test, the, the, the light test, as I said, um, putting it against the light, it also might fail. Even the KPIs or the checklist might also, you know, it, 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 might, it might check all the, the boxes, you know. And, and one typical thing is, is marriage because that's most times where people go wrong. And, and so... Um, don't just check all the boxes that, hey, this person check all the boxes. I should know, right? I should know. This person check all the boxes. I, I checked with my mom. She approves. I checked with my dad. She approves. He, he approves. I checked, you know, with my pastor. They all love him, you know, but what does God say? So um, that is why I always say, you know, some people will will tell you, they would even match you, they would even think that is your perfect match. But if that's not what God wants for you, um, you need to go to God. He's the last resort. And God will always for me in my relationship with him, I always say, Show me a sign. 
show me a sign, Lord, show me a sign. And he would show you, you know, it's not even big. And sometimes it'll take a while. Sometimes it will be immediate, you know, sometimes it will just be things don't really align. They don't really work out. And that's my sign. Like if I'm going through too much um, resistance, you know, uh, and again, even with the resistance, you will know when this is someone trying to block it or God himself blocking it. Like when God himself is blocking something, whoo, that it will be absolutely no way it's going to work out. Like you will try all, all ways and it will never work out. That way you would know this one. Yeah, you know, but most times if God is approving something, even though it might look tough, but things will just smoothly work out. Like it will, it, it's, I don't know how to explain it. You, you will see that, Yes, it, at first it will be rocky and stuff, but like things will align. Like, you know, he would direct you to the right people. You will have the right, um, things will just work out. It, it, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but most times it is too much resistance. It is absolutely no way you try so hard and it doesn't work out. Most times I just relax. I just relax, you know, and let God do the rest. And then sometimes you have to just leave it to God. <laughs> like just leave it, just leave it to God and let him make the decision. There, there was a time there was um, something that, you know, we had to let upper management make the decision. I, I didn't have to take that decision. So there are some things, just leave it to God let God handle it, you know, and um, there are times I've spoken to God about certain things or certain people or certain situations where some people would want to like deal with you so hard and especially vengeance, you say, God, vengeance is not mine. So I'm not going to take it. It's up to you now. You, you, you handle it, you know, and so there are times when you just have to just let go, just leave it to God, you know? And then with time, things will resolve. Things will take shape, you know, just leave it to time. Um, sometimes when I'm working on my apps and testing my apps, because that's the same quality issue and the code sometimes gets blocked, um, because even though you're working on a front end for no code apps, there is still a code <laughs> that is attached on the back end. And um, now with AI, it's easy because AI can fix the code uh, on the back end. But there are times when um, if there's a crash or something, I just leave it to time for a while and then get back to it. And when you get back to it, you find out. Sometimes it just works out. Sometimes it fixes itself. Sometimes you will get better knowledge as to which code to change or what to what command to put. And so if you have that kind of um, a relationship with God where you have worked with him every single time you, you have worked with him, you will know when things are not right or when things go wrong how to fix it or when you know and, and as hebrews 5 14 says sometimes it's just maturity with time with constant practice you'll be able to distinguish good from evil and that is why you know older women older mothers and, and especially women they would know they would tell you mm, that boy stop seeing him uh-uh, it's not good for you, you know, and sometimes when we're young, we, we want to be rebellious, we, wanna, we hate, we hate that, but it's, it's, it's important, you know, you should listen, and um, one last thing about discernment, because again, as I told you now, people are masking it, but um, I have this message from um, I think it is Proverbs. 
Um, it was Proverbs. If you seek it, okay, so it's talking about understanding. Understanding is discernment. So it says, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it, as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Um, if you fear God, as I always say, if you fear God, first of all, wisdom, but the wisdom from above is, is pure, all right? It's peace, peaceable, it's gentle, it's open to reason full of mercy good fruits you know impartial uh, i think that's james james three seventeen. it's sincere so if you start fearing god that's the beginning of wisdom and when you get wisdom you get to understand certain things that the things of god are pure they are peaceful anything that is not peaceful or peaceable like that is not a marker of that's not that has some questionable thing if there's any impurity that is also questionable if there's no gentleness open to reason okay that means um some things that are not open to reason are like you you they're forcing you to do something or it's or it's i you either do this or or, or you die, <laughs> essentially, then that means it's not open to reason because even God is open to reason. As I told you, God gives us free will and gives us choice. Um, full of mercy, if it has no mercy, if there's no fruits, good fruits, fruits of the spirit, if it's partial, because with God, there's impartiality. And, and some people might argue that because um, there's, several scriptures where God favored other people, but um, he's no respecter of persons, all right? He will favor you because of your heart, because of his promises, but he's not a respecter of person. He's not partial, all right? But if, because you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. He will favor you based on his promises, but God is not a partial God. You know, that's an equal playing field and so if there's anything partial if there's an impartiality or something that's not sincere that's those are some of the things you would gauge to know and discern whether this is of god or this is not all right so james three seventeen. that's where i got that from so there are lo loads more stuff about discerning but um i, I just want to help you here because a lot of people discern things and they think oh it's um because they 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 figure it out from their gut feeling or from their spirituality whatever they're doing um but discernment is much more than that if you want to do it in the spirit in the you know, to discern good from evil. Um, you need to submit it to God. You need to submit it to the Holy Spirit and he will direct your path and test it with the light. So um, let me just recap. So the first thing is the KPIs, which is the fruits of the spirit. That's the first thing. If they exhibit the fruits of the spirit and, and then some of them might mask it. It was, now they're pretending. So you check against the works of the flesh, all right? Fruits of the spirit, works of the flesh. If that checks out too, you test it against the light, the light test. You do the light test, which is the word of God. Um, what they're saying or what they're doing, does that align with the word of God? Or are they just, you know, making up rules as they go or making up their own religion as they go um and then if that also they pass it by masking you also have to ask people you know you have to seek counsel seek um just counsel and from people who are mature in the faith all right and not just people who have ulterior motives or maybe your friends or your immediate relatives because they know you and they want some people want certain thing from you you know 
So who, who do you look up to? You go to people who are mature in faith, who've been through some things and let them advise you. Now, also, also that can fail. That can also fail. So you go to God. You go to God. Seek if us the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these other things will be added. Sometimes you have to make sure that it aligns. It is essential. But some people might be asking why? why. Why should I go through all that? It's essential because you don't want to. You, uh, it's appointed to man wants to die after death is judgment. You don't want to go before the Lord and he says, depart from me. I know you not because you are busy following someone who was preaching um, wrong gospel or you are busy doing, thinking that you're doing something for God and when you were merely doing it for man. So you need to discern and and also not just um the things of God but also things of life. You know, like as I said, uh, marriage or um financial decisions or life decisions in general. Um where to go, what to do, right? We'll talk about that when we talk about directions. And then we'll talk about convictions at the end because sometimes God um, gives you downloads that are convictions and not necessarily um, for everybody, but for you, for you as a, pers a personal thing that's for you. But we'll talk about that. But discernment really a spiritual downloads that God can give you, um, but it's a gut feeling, all right? But you have to test it. You have to put it with um, side by side with the word of God and see if what you're feeling is, is really biblical, is really, um, is really according to um, this scripture that I read um, Let's go back to that scripture. It's really according to the scripture about pure wisdom. Why can't I find it now? <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, yeah, that speaks to your what is good and what is, yes okay it's james 3 17 it's like, but the wisdom from heaven from above is first pure okay so whatever you're discerning when you're discerning the spirits it should be first pure peaceable gentle open to reason all right, it's not forcing you for anything. Full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. All right, and that's how you would know. All right, um, also my favorite song, Think on These Things, Whatsoever Things Are Pure, Whatsoever Things Are Holy, Whatsoever Things Are Good Report, Think on These Things. These are the things you you use as KPIs as to discern spirits, okay? Is this pure? Is this a good report? Um, is this holy? Is this right, you know? And even decisions you want to make or uh, choose the people you want to choose to do life with. Is this person holy? Is this person pure in heart? Is this person of good report. I know some people would, you know, tarnish other people's characters, but in your opinion, or when you've you've read or about them or checked them out um, or learned about them, is this of good report? Um, think on these things. These are the things that you need to think of because um, First Kings three eleven says. Because he did not ask for a long life or the life of his enemies, God gave him the understanding to discern what is right. And then he gave him 
um, wealth. He gave Solomon wealth. Okay. So um, I know it's a lot when it comes to discernment, um, but for now, these are some of the things I want to leave with you. As I said, if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. If you are unsure about certain things, run through the KPIs, right? Go through the Torah's level. It should not be too far away. You know, it should be acceptable for you to approve. And also um, make sure that you test it against the light. You know, um, because darkness cannot stand near light. Darkness cannot stand. It will be exposed, all right? And so bring the light close to them, right? Sometimes test some people and see if they, if they fold or if they, they fail the test. Sometimes I, I would tell some people some things and see how they react. Sometimes I test people with one I give you one thing about me and see if you like me after that and then the next day I'll tell you a different thing about me a different side of me show you a different side of me and see how you react because most times on the outside when people meet with me the first time you don't know everything about me. I don't share much with you. I give you in increments. I give you by installment. And, and then see how you react. And I, I can trust you to see if, okay, this side of me or this aspect of me, are you comfortable with that? Especially for friendship or relationship. You know, um, you don't get to know all about me first day. I test you slowly and see if are you are you okay with me being who I truly am or the version of that you have formed in your head about me. Um, but again test everything. Test everything and hold fast to what is good. Love you. Bye.